A large twin model water tube flue boiler. Part 1. The examination and the overview. This model boiler arrived in my workshop to be built into a steam plant with a Stuart No. 9 steam engine. The owner said that he wanted to sell the plant when it was completed, but instead I bought all of the parts. This boiler is a bit of an ugly duckling, but I will see what I can do. With the boiler was a condenser water preheater thing. In a recent video, I piped this to my friend Andrew Stuart 504 boiler, as I really didn't like the design of it or anything about it. The boiler, on the other hand, is very well made. It's a proprietary boiler, and as far as I'm aware, according to the boiler certificate, it was manufactured by a company called Pendle Steam Boilers. From previous experience, I'm a bit wary with this type of boiler because of the twin flue tubes and the explosive ignition on some of them. Later on in this episode, I will find out that this one does not explosively ignite, which is more than can be said for some others that I've worked on. It is one foot long and six inches in diameter. The mounting base, the mahogany strip wood and the boiler bands were all fitted by the owner. Because the boiler banding had been cleaned using metal polish, there was a white residue all over the boiler. I cleaned this off with some WD-40 applied with a toothbrush and then wiped off with a cloth. In my series of Stuart No. 9 steam engine, I featured some of this footage as I explained all about the boiler. I'm sort of doing that again, but the narrative's different and I'm going into much more depth specifically about the boiler. The size of the fittings does puzzle me a little bit. These are quarter by 40 taps and the pipe is 4mm or 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. With a boiler of this size and potential steam raising capacity, I would have expected it to be using 3 16ths of an inch diameter pipe, but instead this is 5 30 seconds of an inch or 4mm pipe. And the steam taps are the ones made by my friend Chris English. The taps are quarter by 40 threads per inch fittings. What you're about to see is a little bit scary. This is the chimney cap that was made by the owner of the boiler. It didn't come with the boiler when he bought it. I've been mentioning scale a few times in recent videos, and this is a great example of how not to do it. This is so radically over scale, it looks incredibly wrong. I removed it and put it somewhere else. Somewhere where I couldn't see it. In the next episode, I will remachine this to a reasonable size. I may be being overcritical, but I do not like this safety valve. I'm going to replace it with the Jubilee fitting safety valve. Because I much prefer them over any other type, the Jubilee fitting safety valves are pop safety valves. They pop open for a while to release the pressure and then snap shut after the pressure has dropped by a small amount. I've removed the copper tube chimney, it's nicely machined and it's a good fit in the hole. The pipe from one of the taps goes into a union on the base of the chimney, and as you can see, then this pipe goes down into a loop and comes back up and out the other side of the chimney mounting. It's not really a superheater, it's a steam dryer. But either way, it does make the boiler more efficient and use less water. This is an overview of the boiler. I'm not going to get into too much detail in the first episode. I want to have a look at what type of ceramic is in the burners. So here I'm taking out the screws that hold the burners in place. Two steel screws for each burner, and that's a good idea. I was once playing with a Max Steam boiler, which was a very similar design to this. And when I lit it, there was a loud bang, and one of the burners blew off and shot across the room. It was only held in, I think, by one brass bolt, which sheared with the pressure of the explosion. I'm very impressed with the manufacture of this boiler. This is quite like the Stuart HB6 boiler that I used to have. Except this has two tubes, and if you look carefully, you will see that the water tubes radiate. They are not just simple cross tubes. This is a good thing for two reasons. Obviously, the heat exchange is good because there are more tubes and the way they're arranged is much better in many ways. And because of the radiating tubes, I think that's why the gas doesn't explode. 
It does pop when you light it, you would expect that, but it doesn't go bang and blow one of the burners out of the flue. I think the volume of the radiated tubes means there's less air in the tubes to mix with the gas and make it explode. I'm going to test the burners on the bench to see how they burn. The type of ceramic in these burners is the proper stuff. Some ceramic for ceramic burners is not good at all and it cremates very easily. This is a steam tap bought from Clevedon Steam, not to be confused with some of the Far Eastern ones that are not very good and leak. I do have a couple of leaky Chinese valves in a box, but I never use them. In fact, I need to deposit them in the bin when I get round to it. These steam taps from Clevedon Steam do not leak, they are really good quality. This is very important because gas leaks are to be avoided at all costs. Here I've screwed the tap into the top of a gas canister, fitted a piece of silicone rubber tubing with a spring clip. And with the ceramic burners sat on the bench, they both ignite perfectly and they burn very clean. Ceramic burners are great because they're not noisy. And because of the design, they can be fitted very close to the boiler. Alternatively, I could make a mounting to take two blowtorch heads that way I would get a lot more heat. The blowtorch heads couldn't be inside the boiler, they'd have to be just outside. It's worth mentioning that it's very easy to get into the realms of fantasy with small model equipment. I receive quite a lot of emails containing questions which are really difficult to reply to. This boiler running at £60 per square inch with very small piping is perfect with the ceramic burners that are supplied with it. Here I'm going to show a close-up of the lighting process. Note the small explosion. It's better to hold a naked flame over the chimney rather than use one of these piezoelectric igniters. It's best to light the small blowtorch before you turn on the gas. I have a boiler which is dual fuel, coal or gas, and the boiler you're about to see is a Castle Steam V6 boiler, which is an entirely different design to this one. You're about to see a clip where I'm running the Castle Steam boiler using coal, and it's a fire tube boiler. It raises steam very, very quickly and provides enough steam at full working pressure to run a Stuart 5A which is a small, full-size steam engine. This Stuart 5A has a 2 quarter inch diameter bore, and it uses a lot of steam, but the Castle V6 design copes with it. I also have a water pump, which is steam-operated, which replenishes the water that turns into steam, which in turn powers the 5A. In this next clip, you can see it all in operation. This was steaming in the garden during the COVID-19 lockdown. This clip shows just how good this boiler is. Its working pressure is 100 pounds per square inch. It's blowing off. The engine is really running fast. Chime whistles are quite big and they use a lot of steam. And as you can see, the pressure is held at 100 pounds per square inch all the time. And it's starting to blow off again. Time for a bit of slow motion. Shortly before this, a friend of mine arrived and we're having a bit of a chat. My voice is louder than his because I'm near the camera and he's three metres away. That would easily power a 25 foot boat down the river. Would it? So just with that system, you could, you could lift it out yeah. when you finish yeah. running it. Yeah. A quick look at the fire tells me that the fire is in excellent order. It's worth mentioning that the exhaust from the engine is not going up the chimney. If that was the case, this fire would be white hot. This boiler I'm working on is much smaller, but it has its benefits. Because it's a water tube boiler, it's going to hold a lot more water than a fire tube boiler. Here I'm removing the front cover so you can have a look inside. The front cover is held in place by three steel bolts. And once I remove those, I could easily lever the front cover off and out of the way. And this is what is inside. The loop of copper pipe you can see is the steam dryer. I'm not going to do anything with this, it's fine. 
The spoiler is for an entirely different application than the Castle Steam V6. For instance, had I have done what I was asked to do, which was build this into a steam plant with the Stuart No. 9, this would be good. It's not going to win any prizes for being the most efficient steamer, but it will steam for a long time before it needs refilling. As I previously mentioned, if I use two blowtorch heads just outside the flues, this boiler will make a lot more steam, but there's no point. Its working pressure, as stated in the boiler certificate, is £60 per square inch. The Castle Steam V6 boiler has a working pressure of £100 per square inch. Castle Steam are currently working on a V8 boiler, that's an 8 inch diameter boiler, and I've put my name down for one of those once the design is proven by the prototype. I've been having a look at the boiler bushes in the top of the boiler. I was thinking maybe I could re-thread one of them to take a larger tap. But no, I do not want to make any structural modifications to the boiler in any way, it's fine. From my point of view, this will become a very useful accessory to have in the workshop, a boiler that I can quickly fire that will run for a long time without having to be filled with water all of the time, a constant flow of steam at a good pressure, to run model steam engines of various sizes. All I'm going to do to start with is remachine the chimney cap. That is it for the introduction and overview. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.